fossils are looking so good on the wall. I love how this palmetto frond preserved. I couldn't believe it actually stayed together. You got some little pieces of it too. What's up guys? Welcome to the video. I'm about to go get some breakfast at Waffle House and then go get a new screen protector for my phone. I'm about to run out of gas. This is my last phone. I just got a new one. The last one, the case broke and I stepped on it. So that phone is no more. We're gonna head out and do some fossil hunting today. I haven't done that in a while. We just had a big high water event in the springs and rivers, so the sand's definitely shifted, and I'm hoping that's been for the better, and then it's washed some fossils up to where I can get to them. But then tomorrow, I'm gonna go do some herping, and I might even do some herping today, but tomorrow I'm probably gonna spend the entire day herping. So stay tuned for that. Right now I'm gonna go get breakfast, and I'll see you guys at the spring. Guys, I was just going through the screen here, and I haven't gone all the way through it yet, but I got my first ever tapir tooth. So I'm very happy about that. It's missing the root, but so cool. All right, so I've been out here all day running sand through that sifter. And what we got is a pile of bones all fossilized. So we got a lot of turtle shell fragments. It's this really cool old coin. I need to look it up and see how old it is, but it's a $1.00. Gonna have to look into that, see how old that thing is. So right here, we got a tapir tooth. Pretty cool. And that's actually the second one that I just got. The first one I got earlier today. So right there, it's got some nice enamel on it. Pretty cool. Tapirs haven't lived in Florida in thousands of years, at least. So it's pretty cool. We also got, you know, lots of turtle shell fragments. This one's kind of neat. So neat stuff all in all. I like this leg bone. That's like the most complete one I've ever found. Not sure what it's from. But some cool stuff, I'm about to head out. And tomorrow we will go herping. We got a little eastern diamond back here. Awesome. He's a big head. He was basking in some brush. I was able to pull him out, get a look at him. He's beautiful. He's a beautiful snake and he's deep in shed. So that just goes to show how good he would look out of shed. But it's a perfect day for him. It's really overcast and it's also pretty warm. It feels like it's about 80 degrees. There's actually two racers in the same clump of brush right there, and this was the only one I was able to get. Pretty cool. I mean, when we let them go, I'm going to let them go back where they were, try to keep them separate, because this racer would love to make a meal of that rattlesnake, I'm sure, because it's such a small rattlesnake. Yeah. All right, I think we've gotten enough video of this cute little guy. We're going to let him go. You can see he's shaking his tail as hard as he can, but it's not making any sound because he's pretty young and he's only had one shed so far. But he's about to shed again, so this next shed he'll be able to rattle because he'll have two buttons to rattle, two segments. We were walking through, or walking down this trail here, and I saw a coach whip take off, so I chased it. And it ran up a tree and then got into another tree, and I was just chasing him in the trees, finally able to grab him. And now he's being pretty chill. They tend to calm down like this after you catch them. They kind of play dead. That's actually what he's doing right now. Playing dead. Awesome. But, you know, these are pretty intelligent snakes and they move through the trees like butter. It's a beautiful coach whip. It's a tan phase one. He's got this nice, beautiful tail. Looks like a braided whip. This snake is close to six feet long if not six feet. It's a very long snake. 
Really happy with that. We saw a Diamondback and two racers earlier. So we're gonna let this guy go and continue our day, but really happy we got to see him. I just hiked up something pretty cool. I saw a racer earlier, I just let it go. I didn't really, I took some pictures, didn't film it, I should have, but I see plenty of them, but here's a nice pretty corn snake. These guys are always a welcome treat. It's a pretty average sized one. But yeah, corn snake, Anthrophus guttatus. This guy was absolutely chewing on me a minute ago. He's probably about to do it again. You can see right there. But yeah, beautiful snake. It's nice and warm out and it's heating up. So the snakes are starting to come out because we had a pretty cool night last night. But I'm gonna let him go and continue about my day, but it's always a treat to see those guys. Always a treat. Common but beautiful snake here in Florida. Flipped over one of these boards and we got ourselves this right here. Nice little red salamander. This is the southern red salamander, so they're a little less vibrantly colored than their northern counterparts. But this one's a bit younger than the last one I saw here, so he's still got some of his red coloration on his tail and on his sides there. So, pretty cool. Pseudotriton Ruber. Pretty cool little guy. I love these, and I was never able to have much luck with them up where they're more common in the mountains. But down here in Florida, I've seen two since being down here, so this is awesome. Pretty cool. I'm going to let him go back under his, his board, and we'll keep moving. Already seen a corn snake, a racer, and this guy today, so not a bad day. There we go. All right, guys, so we finally found a live eastern coral snake. It's been about... I don't know, six years since I've seen an eastern coral snake alive. I saw a dead one the other day, and finally we got a live one. It's nice and cool today. No clouds in the sky, surprisingly. I, I thought I would see one on a cloudy, really humid day, but this guy is out in clear skies. What a beautiful animal. This is North America's only native alapid. North America is only a lap. What a beautiful animal. If you didn't know, lapids are the family that contains cobras, mambas, crates. So, therefore, coral snakes are unlike any other snake in the U.S. So, they're, they have a neurotoxic venom. It destroys your nervous system, shuts down your heart, your lungs. Some of the vipers we have, you're more likely to lose a limb because it attacks your your blood and your, your tissue. So these guys, you're not getting tissue damage. You're just straight up pretty much dying if you don't get medical attention. But thankfully the coral snake does not typically bite. They're pretty docile snake species. I'm just handling it with these tongs here. Um, I don't I don't feel very scared to get close to it because um, they are docile. They typically don't bite. Although I'm not gonna push my luck here. But you know, they don't usually bite, but when they do it's bad news, so they definitely deserve respect, but nobody gets bitten by these guys. Therefore nobody dies from them each year because they don't typically bite, you have to actually pick them up to get them to bite. So, it's typically not a snake that you're gonna need to be afraid of or you need to really look out for, other than if you're picking up snakes. If you're gonna go out picking up snakes, you should definitely know what they look like. So you've probably heard the rhyme, red touches yellow, kill a fellow. Red touches black, friend of Jack, because the coral snake does have a few mimics. You've got the scarlet snake and the scarlet king snake, and also the milk snake that live in the U.S. that all have these same colors, but the pattern is different. Really, I don't like telling people to use that rhyme because if you use the rhyme, you're very likely to get it mixed up. And when the time comes you see the snake, you're gonna not exactly remember what the actual rhyme is. The better thing to do is just not pick up snakes they have this color scheme unless you know your snakes. That's the best thing to do. 
So how dangerous are they? Well, the attitude of the coral snake is, like I said, pretty docile. They're highly, highly fossorial and secretive, so it's not a snake you're going to see a lot. So all the snake wants to do is get into that cover of that palmetto there. So it's about time we let him go. And it's awesome we got to see him, but it's time for him to get on his way. It's starting to warm up out here. And this beautiful snake is going to go back into its habitat. And hopefully never encounter another human being again. What a cool animal. Alright, releasing the coral snake. Don't ever try this at home. Just like that, that beautiful creature disappears. We had such good luck today. We're out here road cruising tonight. We got Caitlin with me. Woohoo! Wesley's on board. Wesley's on board. <laughs> First snake of the night's a cottonmouth. We're not going to spend too much time with him because we got roads to cruise and things to find while the movement's happening. But this little guy is tiny. I thought he was a pygmy at first just because how tiny he is. He's very grumpy. He is one of the smallest cottonmouths I've seen. Look at that. Anyway, we'll get him out of the road and keep moving. That might be the prettiest one I've ever seen. That was a pretty rat snake. What's the temperature right now? It's gotta be cold. Yeah. <laughs> Sir number two. Under that. These are brown chin racers. They're a little different than black racers, but pretty much the same thing we've been seeing. As the ones in Bay County also have brown chins. He's actually got some brown on his chin. Two for two. Third piece of tin, third racer. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Every flip's had a racer so far. Yeah. It's nice and snuggled. Fourth piece of tin we flipped. It's got a racer. <laughs> wow. <clears throat> Every piece of tin's gonna have a racer. That's pretty cool. We're gonna leave that guy right there, but awesome. Alright, just flip this right here. Got us a nice broadhead skink. Been a minute since I've got one in hand, so that's pretty cool. Whoa, whoa, whoa. So I've been cruising for a while now. It's after 12 o'clock. Just cruised a nice gray rat snake. Let me get him out in the sun here. Beautiful snake. It's quite different looking than the, the last one you saw in the video. It's a bit smaller, but still beautiful all the same. And this guy, it's about 75 degrees now, if not a little bit warmer. So this guy's heated up and ready to go. But I'm going to hold on to him for a minute until Justin and his friend gets here. So that they can get a good look at him and um, we'll let him go. But awesome snake. hot out so we're doing some creek walking just found a mud turtle that's a pretty cool one I haven't seen one in a minute all right Micah just spotted our next snake of the day it's a brown water snake a big one right there just basking 
this thing looks like he's got some SFD going. He's pretty crusty and kind of thin, so I'm not going to handle him too much longer. I'm going to just see if I can get him to go back to basking. All right, guys, so been at it all day. Justin and Micah have found a couple of cotton mouths and they got a pygmy since uh, I last was with them. And I've had no luck. I've been going to flip some tin, didn't find anything. So now I'm gonna just do one more stretch of road and then head on home. But I'm hoping that I get at least something on the way out of here.